So hi everyone, I'm Devin Bandog, and as Linnell said, I work for the CSE Storage in Parsons, Kansas, uh, this summer uh, with their internship program. So a little bit about the company. Uh, it's part of CST Industries, like the larger side of it, and they manufacture like factory coated bolted storage tanks for agriculture and various other uh, industries. And CST Storage is just one of the manufacturing plants. And uh, since CST Industries has become a, a company, they installed over 350,000 storage tanks throughout the United States and even the world. And so they've branched out since the beginning. And CST Storage has had a P2 intern every year since 2011, except for maybe one year, I think. But so they've been committed to pollution prevention and they've installed a lot of different uh, ideas and things interns have uh, submitted and things like that. So they put like LED lighting in their shop, they bought a UE Ultra Pro 9000 uh, for their air leak audits. And they installed a new water heater for the pre treatment system to reduce water and natural gas. So, a lot of different projects they've implemented. Um, so, a little bit about the company background and like what they do. So, they take raw material that's brought into the plant, uh, sheet metal, and they fabricate it using CNC machines. Uh, so, they form it to the specifications of the parts. And then once they're done with that, they go through a pre-treatment process where each individual metal part is blasted and washed to get all the dirt and grime off of it before it goes through the painting process, which they do two coats, a powder coating, and then it goes through a dryer to dry, and then a liquid coating uh, as well. So whatever color the, the company that's ordering the part wants. So, and goes to a curing and then eventually storage area where then it's shipped off from the company to be assembled on site uh, wherever it's going. And then they also have mechanical and specialized parts that get welded and then individually painted that can't fit on the actual paint job that they have. So my first project of six that I evaluated this summer uh, was a new, the new pre-treatment system audit that I mentioned a little bit. So they installed these, uh, these new water heaters back in January of this year, and basically to reduce uh, their water usage and natural gas usage compared to the old uh, heaters. So as you can see, the old heaters were rated at 3.5 million BTUs, whereas the new ones were 1.5 million BTUs. So just downgrading it a little bit to do the same process as So as part of my uh, research into it, I took flow meter data for water over the course of several weeks to a month. And so every day I would go through and take the meter reading in gallons. I uh, tried to do about the same time every day, but sometimes it didn't work out. Um, and then with that, I get that like an average daily usage and then a gallon per minute. The hours per minute, I wanted to be a little bit more accurate, so I did a couple of experiments where I actually took a stopwatch and went there and watched the meter when it was running full blast and got it down to, it was about 1.19 gallons per minute for the new system. Whereas previous interns took data and they estimated about four gallons per minute. So with that, you can calculate the about the water saved, about 667,000 gallons per year, if one take into account how often the water heaters are running on a daily basis, uh, running about 198 days per year just when their factory is running. Um, and then the natural gas savings was estimated using a calculator at about 703,000 cubic feet per year. And then, so the estimated overall total savings is about $13,000 in cost and then about 43 megaton, metric tons of CO2. For the new system. The second project I evaluated was skylighting versus uh, the traditional shop lighting that's there. So CST is thinking about installing skylights in their shop area to reduce electricity cost of lighting that they currently spend every year. Um, so the first thing I looked at was I took illumination data in the plant using uh, sensors and then I got an average of about 38 foot candles 
in CST and then looking at standards for illumination in a plant life setting or workshop setting, it's about 46.5 for candles. So CST is a little bit under uh, what it's like industry standard for lighting in an area for worker safety and being able to see it properly in the work. So it's a little bit under, but it's still not bad. Uh, so CST would improve the skylighting based off of results I got from the SkyCal program and also the a company that I talked to that installed skylights. So this is their results from it. I did a similar uh, analysis to using the program. So with their program, they said about 150 skylights evenly spaced uh, over CST group. And then you can get about an illumination number and foot candles uh, per an average day during the given month and then for the time. Uh, so that's an average day in September at around one o'clock, which is what it is now, you have about 92 foot candles of light given the skylighting for 150 skylights. And this program, you have to assume a lot of things and you have to put in a lot of input like uh, ceiling height and uh, color of the walls. Like it goes, it has a lot of things that you have to put in and measure. And so, so it's an assumption. And that's the best you can do without actually installing skylights. So this is what they gave. And then um, since CST uh, replaced most of their high pressure sodium bulbs in the past year or two with LED lighting, the electricity savings are greatly reduced because of this. And then for the 150 skylights, the total cost, given that each skylight was about $400 for their quote that they gave me, it adds up to about $58,500. And this is include installation, tax, or any other fees that go along with installing skylights. That's just the skylights themselves. So just based off that, that gives a payback at around 11.3 years to pay back just the skylights, probably over double when you take into account installation based off the savings that were estimated from the SkyCal program at about $5,000 per year. And it would have been a lot more if they would have done this years ago with the high pressure savings. But with the LEDs, the savings definitely have increased. And because of a huge payback period, I didn't recommend this to CST at this time unless the price of uh, skylights can be greater. Third project I evaluated was looking at solar uh, panels to power facility lighting. Uh, CST uh, talked about this one being one of the main projects I was still work on this uh, past summer. So they wanted me to look at the lighting usage for CST. So I went through and talked to a lot of people and counted light bulbs and all these different things to get an estimate of CST using approximately 416,000 kilowatt hours per year on just lighting. And then that equates to about thirty-six thousand dollars in electricity costs. Um, that also includes them from switching over to the LED bulb as well. It was a lot more than that. Um, so with that in mind, I looked at three different options um, for solar power. Um, one was a lower, uh, like a fifty kilowatt system, and then a hundred kilowatt system, and then up to um, a rated 258 kilowatt system that I talked to a solar company out of Kansas City, uh, Rising Sun Solar, and they rated that 258 kilowatt system. And this is an example from them. They would install the panels. You can see it here um, on the south side of the roof because there's nothing protruding the roof and there's no shading or shoes or anything there. It's just a nice even surface um, for solar power. So out of the three options, um, the 258 kilowatt system had the best payback of 8.4 years. Even though it had the highest upfront cost, it also saves the most electricity. So the upfront cost is about $442,000, but the system is rated to save about $30,600 per year um, based off of estimates like PV watts calculator, and then they also did their estimate as well. And with that, about 387 metric tons of CO2. But over the course of the life of the solar panel, it's about, or solar array, which is about 25 years for solar panels. And then you get warranties, I think, up to 20, 20 years for them. 
um, the system is supposed to save one million dollars over one million dollars for CC. And this is from a report that I got from Rising Sun Solar. They gave me about a ten-page report detailing the work in progress and the timeline and everything. So even though it's expensive, it would pay itself back in eight about eight and a half years. So I did recommend this one to uh, CST due to um, tax incentives being decreased after this year. So it's at 30% right now, and then next year it's going to drop to 26% and then 22%. And they're going to give their government tax incentives for solar unless they get revenge. But um, so it's just going to be a little bit costly for them if they want to do it in the future. So now would be the best time if they were to do so. Uh, the fourth project I looked at was each year the intern does a compressed air leak audit. So I took the Ultra Pro uh, 9000 and went through, took one of my days and looked for all the air leaks, took a big portion of the day. So it was fun. But I found 56 leaks. And with that, uh, the savings, I gave a range based because I didn't know the exact PSI coming out of the leaks. So uh, on the low end, I said it was about 75 PSI and high end is about 100 PSI, and the, the lines are rated 100 PSI. Um, so between 8,500 to 11,500 potential savings if maintenance were to fix these leaks. So I gave them a chart and everything that outlines like this, where it outlines where each leak's located, and I took pictures of everything and gave that to them. So. I know it's a little hard to see, but the red is where each week. Um, and then the fifth project I looked at was on top of the solar, I looked at uh, LED lighting for the office area. So they did install LED lighting for their shop, but their office still uses TA fluorescent bulbs um, in the office areas. So I did a lighting analysis, counter bulbs, see electricity usage that they have. And then I got uh, three different options, two of which were from a local lighting company that I talked to representatives from. And then one was one I found off the internet, which was the Sunco 18 watt bulbs. And then the two were American Electric and Stanley Electric, which were local companies that CST has done business with in the past. And then you can see the cost per bulb and the total cost for installing LEDs for each for the entire office area and the annual savings based off wattage. And the payback, since LED technology has uh, gotten a lot better in the past, you know, 10 years, the simple payback period is definitely a lot lower than it has been. So two and a half years or so to pay back, which isn't that bad. So I recommended the 15 watt American Electric option because they include wiring harnesses to get rid of uh, ballast for the fluorescent bulbs and to basically move their lighting forward uh, so they wouldn't go back to TA fluorescence. The final project I looked at was one that interns have done looked at in the past, which was energy savings for shop fans uh, in the shop. So CST currently has about 86 shop fans scattered throughout the shop for workers. And then they're constantly on, and I noticed just where I was there walking around, even when people aren't necessarily by them, fans are constantly blowing, even during breaks and lunch period, fans are constantly running. So I wanted to look at this project. Um, I looked at, and then from previous intern estimates that they rated for each fan, and then I took current usage for the fans and estimated about, fan is about $9,000 per year, so 109,000 kilowatt hours. And then I looked at possible solutions uh, for this problem. I looked at motion sensors uh, for the outlets, and then I also looked at programmable outlet timers for each individual fan. Um, the motion sensors seemed most promising when I first looked at it, um, but I couldn't find ones that were rated high enough to handle the wattage of the fans, because each fan is rated between 500 and 800 watts, so they're, they're big fans. Um, so I couldn't find one that was high enough to handle the load from the, the fans, but the program, this programmable outlet timer, 
I found it would be about 700 watts that it would be able to take, and you could plug in multiple potentially. And then you could program multiple times throughout the day that uh, they would shut on and off. So I went with this option, even though I didn't recommend this due to the fact that it would take a lot of work to get the timing schedule right, and then workers might get frustrated if they're working during a time and the fans just shut off and things like that. So I would think the most viable option would be a motion sensor. So I didn't recommend it at this time or possibly in the future if the technology got a little bit better that we go use motion sensors. So maybe in the future, another intern could see if there's another thing out there for motion sensor technology. So the project summary table, so uh, this is all the savings for each project evaluated, and then the amount, the environmental impact in each project as well. Uh, the total, I know it's cut off, but uh, the total doesn't include the ones that I didn't recommend, so that the skylighting and then the uh, electricity savings and shop fans are not included in the totals for cost or environmental results. Yeah, as you can see, about almost fifty-five thousand dollars in annual savings would be uh, what you could see if each of the projects that I recommended were included. And they're already saving about thirteen thousand dollars per year for the pre new pre-fusion system because it's already. <coughs> I'd like to thank uh, CST Storage and Austin Employees for making me feel at home uh, this summer. They're very helpful, you know, answering any questions I had, and everyone was very welcoming. And I also think, like to thank the Kansas State uh, University Pollution Prevention Institute for funding this work and giving me this opportunity. I really enjoy it. That is it. Any questions? So Devin, um, and just to let you know, EPA funds it, funds us to do the program. So no, 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 I appreciate the, the thanks, but I just want to point that out since they're sitting in the front row. <laughs> it's under a pollution prevention grant. Um, and you may have to repeat this question in case we need it picked up for the um, recording. But I, I was curious, how many shifts does CST run now? We run two. So are they two twelves or two eights or? I think they're two tens. Okay, so there is a down period of just like four to six hours, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So do the fans get turned off then? Uh during the night hours, I'm not sure because I'm not there at you know four in the morning. But uh, during the daytime, no, I would walk around like if between shifts, I think around three or four in the afternoon. Yeah, a lot of the fans are still running and stuff. Okay, but the, you don't know if they're on 24 seven or if they actually, some of them get some shut them down. Some of them get turned off for sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, and then um, when, when was the new water heater installed? Uh, early this year. Okay, okay, great. So we got that, all right, good. And, um, and then on the 56 leaks, so, I don't remember what they had last year, but they do have a preventive maintenance program in place. Is, is that not correct? Uh, Where maintenance goes around every month, every three months, every six months to do that uh, compressed air study? Uh, I talked to Matt and he said they only do it twice. Twice a year. Okay, so probably so the intern does it once and then they do. Okay. Yeah. So there's 56 new leaks in I don't six know about months. You, but some, sometimes they don't fix it. That's okay, so some. I was so, wondering okay. I mentioned in my report that I talked to people and sometimes you know they're the same leaks from last year. So I don't know what needs to. And you're be. you're taking a picture. They're not getting like tagged with a tag that has you know repair or no, anything. No, they're pictured using that uh, leak survey. Okay. Okay. 
I'm just, I see this each year and I'm trying to think of how can we be a little more proactive to prevent. Yeah. Um, and I knew that they have the PM program in place. So that's good. Because a lot of places, you know, might only get to it once a year when the intern gets there. Um, but there was a potential um, mm, more preventative type of solution that Bono found last year. Yeah, when did you look at that? At, when he did it, uh, set the lines at two high PSI. Like he did, the lines are like 100 PSI rated, but uh, the things, the technology he found was very impressive. It wouldn't be able to handle it. it, able to handle it. And it was going to be more of a, um, a stable airline that would not allow for leaks. Is, is that correct to you? Do you remember? I'm not sure. Okay. And you, but you didn't necessarily research that one to see. I, read, I read that part of the report and he basically said that it's. It wasn't PSI feasible at that time. Yeah. I'm hoping they'll make some, yeah. some technology um, upgrades on that. So, okay. Well, thank you. Devin, what, what were the leaks? I mean, basically, what type of leaks were you seeing? All those things. I mean, was it in the connectors? A lot was of it, it was connectors, okay. I would say, or like pipe joints and things like that. So, it was, I don't know if I found very many that were actually connected into pipes, but a lot of it was pipe connectors. What about hoses? Was there a lot of? Yeah, there were a lot of hoses too. Pressed air lines that they used. So maybe nicks and things like that in the hoses from the metal yeah. because they're a man metal manufacturer. Okay. 